So we have completed up to electric potential due to a dipole. The next topic in electric potential is electric potential energy. The next is electric potential energy. Electric or you can write this as electrostatic potential energy. So electrostatic potential energy by definition is whenever you have electric forces in your system, say you have a charge, positive charge and a negative charge. These two charges will interact with each other and due to this interaction, your system will have some net electrical energy, electric potential energy. So the cause of potential energy is it is due to electric interaction between charges, electric interaction between charges. Between charges. So, electrodynamic potential energy is potential energy due to interaction between two charges. And mathematically, you can calculate your potential energy using work done. I'm writing the definition, then we will see how, how we calculate the potential energy using this definition. So, potential energy. of system of point charges is work done. You don't need even point charges. This definition is valid for any, any type of charge. System of charges is work done by external force, work done by external force in carrying charges carrying charges from infinity to finite separation. Against the electric field, against the electric field without acceleration. Or in one line, you can simply say, that potential energy is simply the work done to make the system. You can simply write this as potential energy is work done to make the system. So the work done to make the system gets stored in the system in the form of potential energy. Let's start with the potential energy of a system of two point charges. So it's potential energy of system of two point charges. So you have a system having two point charges. This is the coordinate frame. So the position vector of this point is R1. Let's call this point as A. Over point A, we have a charge plus Q. Then you have another point B. The position vector of point B is R2. And here the charge is Q. Now this charge Q1 and Q2 will interact with each other. Means Q1 and Q2 will exert force over each other. Due to this interaction, the system will have some potential energy. Here charge Q1 and charge Q2 will exert force over each other. Electric forces, they will repel each other. So due to this electric force, the system will have some net potential energy. To calculate that potential energy, assume that both of these charges were at infinity. They were at infinity and the separation between the two charges is infinite. If charges are at infinity, that means they will not interact with each other. If they don't interact with each other, that means there is no potential energy of the system. Potential energy is zero. You have to bring these charges from infinity to this point A. You have to calculate work done to make the system. To make the system means you have to bring these charges Q1 and Q2 from their infinite separation to the respective positions. Like you have to calculate work done in carrying Q1 from infinity to point A. See, Q2 is at infinity itself. When you are carrying Q1 from infinity to A, there is no other charge. So there won't be any other attraction or repulsion. Means 
you don't have to do any work done to bring this charge Q1 from infinity to infinity. So work done, because we always do some work against some force. There is no charge go ahead. So there's nothing which can attract or repel this Q1. So the work done in carrying Q1 from infinity to point A is zero. So work done in carrying Q1, work done in carrying Q1 from infinity to A is zero. So W1 is zero. That's my first thing. Now, the next is let's bring this Q2 from infinity to A. When you carry this Q2 from infinity to this point B, then see there's already this charge Q1. This Q1 will try to repel this Q2. And due to this repulsion, this Q2 will have will gain some energy, it will gain some potential energy. So again, when you are carrying this Q2 from infinity to B, then Q1 will repel this Q2. Due to this repulsion, the system will get some net energy. To calculate that energy, you have to use work. So work done. The next is work done to carry Q2 from infinity to B. So we're supposed to carry Q2 charge from infinity to point B. So the work done will be W2. Work done is charge Q2 multiplied by potential at B minus potential at infinity. Potential at infinity is always zero. Infinity means point where the electrical effect of the charge vanish. So potential at infinity is zero. But to calculate potential at P, you can use this separation. So it's R1 to R2. This is R1. This is R1. So the potential at point B. So over this point B, potential is due to this Q1 only. So potential at B is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. It's charge Q1 divided by separation between A and B. The separation between A and B is R1. So you can substitute the values of V infinity and VB over here. When you substitute these values, work done comes out to be Q2. Potential at B is Q1 over 4 pi epsilon naught R12 minus potential at infinity, which is zero. So the work done in carrying the next charges, it's Q1, it's Q2 by 4 pi epsilon naught R. So this is the work done in carrying this charge Q2 from infinity. So the total work done would be total work done W is sum of W plus W. So the total work done is it's W1 plus W. So the total work done, W1 is 0. W2 is it's Q1, Q2 by 4 pi epsilon naught R1. So the total work done is this. This is the total work done. Q1, Q2 over 4 pi epsilon naught R1. This is the total work done to make the system. This is total work done to make the system. This total work done will get stored in the system in the form of potential energy. This total work done would be equal to potential energy. This total work done gets stored in the system. System in the form of potential. In the form of potential energy. So potential energy of a system of two point charges is simply equal to work done, which is Q1 Q2 over 4 pi epsilon naught R12. This is how we calculate potential energy for the system of two point charges. It's Q1 Q2 by 4 pi epsilon naught R12. Okay, let's solve some numericals on this concept. The first question. So you have two charges, uh, a charge of three millicoulomb and a charge of minus two microcoulomb 
are placed at a separation of 3m. So charge of 3 millicoulomb and a charge of minus 2 microcoulomb are placed at a separation of 3m. You're supposed to calculate the potential energy of the system. So you can calculate potential energy as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. It's Q1 multiplied by Q2 over R. So R is the separation between them. Q1 is 3 millicoulomb. So that's 3 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 coulomb. Q2 is minus 2 microcoulomb, minus 2 into 10 raised power 6 coulomb. R is 3 mm, that means 3 into 10 raised to the power minus 3. If I substitute all values here, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught is 9 into 10 raised to the power 9. Q1 is 3 into 10 raised to the power minus 3. Q2 is minus 2 into 10 raised to the power minus 6 divided by R, where R is 3 into 10 raised to the power minus 3. So this will cancel this thing. Potential energy is minus of 18 into 10 raised to the power 3. This is the potential energy of the system. So let's say, let's write calculate first part, potential energy. Using this potential energy, you can calculate some more parameters. Like this is potential energy, which is minus 18 into 10 raised power 3. You can also calculate work done to make the system. Here, work done to make the system is exactly equal to potential energy, which is minus 18 into, this is work done to make the system. Minus 18 into raised to the power 3. Next, using this negative sign of potential energy, you can predict that this system is bounded. If potential energy of your system is negative, negative potential energy means the forces involved are attractive. If involved forces are attractive, that means your potential energy is negative and your system is a bounded system. It's like it's like an atom. In an atom, you have electron and protons. So that electron and proton makes a bounded system. Electron cannot move out of the atom on its own. To move this electron out of the atom, you need some external force. So system of electron and proton, the system of earth and sun, these are bounded systems. So if your potential energy is negative, their potential energy is negative. Potential energy is negative. This negative potential energy shows that your system is bound. This negative energy shows that system is bounded. If energy were positive, like if this value of energy instead of negative, it comes out to be plus 18 into 10 raised power 3, then the positive energy would be that your system is unbound. Like if you have a positive charge and another positive charge, a proton and another proton. So proton will ripple this proton. The system that you will get is an unbounded system. But right now, this is a bounded system. Fourth part. If your system is bounded, then he can ask you to calculate work done to break the system. Work done to break the system. So if work done to make the system is this minus 18 into 10 raised power minus 3. So the work done to break the system would be exactly negative of this. So you can write that work done to break the system is negative of work done to make the system. This is it. So work done to break the system is just negative of the work done to make the system. So you can say that work done to break the system is minus of minus 18 into 10 raised to the power 3. So the work done to break the system is just 18 into 10 raised to the power 3. So this is how we calculate work done to break the system. Okay, after two charges, if we have a system of endpoint charges or a system of endpoint charges, If you have a system having endpoint charges, the formula is just if you have endpoint charges, calculate potential energies due to each of the individual charge. Taking pairs, you can. If you have four charges, then you can then you will take pair of two two charges each. So the expression of potential energy from endpoint charges comes out to be, it's one over four pi epsilon naught. It's one by two. This is I equal to one to n j equal to 1 to n, i is not equal to j, it's qi, it's qj over i. This is the form. You can expand it, expand it like, this is summation. Summation means you're adding this i term from 1 to n, and you're also adding this j term from 1 to n. 
So the expression of potential energy is this. Potential energy is 1 over 4 by epsilon naught into half. Instead of i, you can substitute 1. Instead of j, you can substitute 1. So you can write this as this is q1. And i and j should not be equal. If you take i equal to 1, then your j would be 2. q1, q2 over r. Next, you can say that your i is 1 now. Your j is 3 now. So this will be q1, q3 over r1. Then you can say that your i is 1, but your j is 4, r1. Right? Keep on continue up to n. This formula is given in NCRT, but in numericals, we will not use this formula. I just have mentioned this formula as it was given in NCRT, but we will not use this in numericals. For numericals, we use other techniques. Just note this formula, then see some numericals on endpoints out. Don't worry about this formula. The next question is, say instead of two charges, you have a system of four charges. You have a system of four point charges. Let's say you have a charge plus E. You have another charge, which is plus two E. You have a charge minus E. And then you have another charge, which is minus two. Each side of the square is A. You're supposed to calculate the potential energy of the system. Calculate potential energy of the system. Potential energy of the system. So to calculate potential energy of the system, just count the number of interactions. Like this plus E, by the way, if side is A, then the diagonal would be A root 2, right? The square, the each side of square is A, then the diagonal of the square is A root 2. You're supposed to calculate the potential energy of the system. One method is to use that summation, the formula that we have written in the previous section. And that's very lengthy and complicated thing. Instead of that formula, you can just directly solve this problem by making pairs of two two charges. See, this E will interact with this 2E. So when E and 2E interact and they are placed at a separation A, so you can simply write that potential energy is 1 over 4 pap sal naught. It's charge E multiplied by 2E over separations. Then you can take next, next interaction. This plus E can interact with this minus E. If plus E interact with this minus E, that's 1 over 4 pap sal naught will be, will be repeated. So I'm just taking it to be common. I am taking this 1 over 4 pap sal naught to be common. So this is E multiplied by 2e over Similarly, this e can interact with this minus e. And the potential energy is, it's charge e, take this minus e as negative over it. This plus e can interact with this minus 2e, so that's plus e. That's minus 2e over plus e and minus 2e, the separation is equal. So e to e, e minus e, and e is minus 2e, that's the interaction. The next is you can take other interactions as well. Like, so this E with 2E, E with minus E, and E with minus E. So all interactions of E are consumed. Next, start with the interaction of 2E. 2E can interact with this E, but we have already considered this interaction. When I say that E and 2E interact with each other, that means interaction of E with 2E or interaction of 2E with E are the same thing. We have already counted this interaction, so we will not consider it. Is it clear why we are not considering this interaction of 2e with e? Next, we can take the interaction of 2e with minus e. Just check, have we counted this interaction earlier? This 2e plus 2e and minus e. Have we counted this interaction? No. Okay. Then. So let's inter take interaction of 2e and minus e. So that's 2e, then minus e over e. Next, we can take interaction of 2e with minus 2. This is again diagonal, it's a root 2. So that is 2e minus of 2e over a. So these are the interactions of 2e. Next, let's count the interactions of minus e. The first interaction of minus e is with plus e. So have we counted this interaction earlier or we should consider it? We don't have to consider. We don't have to consider. We already consider this interaction like this plus e and minus e. We already consider this interaction. What about minus e and plus 2e? We have considered. We have considered. Like minus e and plus 2e. We have already considered. Last, minus e and minus 2e. The next is, this: we have not considered this interaction yet. Minus e and minus 2e. So it's minus e, minus 2e over e. So these are following six interactions. 
So the potential energy is simply, it's one over four pi epsilon naught. That's two e square over eight. It's minus e square over eight. It's minus two e square over eight. Minus two e square over eight. Minus four e square over eight. So this minus e square and this minus four e square. So when you combine them, that's minus five e square. It's one over four pi epsilon naught. See this two e square by a will cancel this two e square by a. You're left with only minus two e square by a. Minus e square by a root two minus four e square by a root two. That means minus five e square over a. The next time you can take this e square by a as common. So it's one over four pi epsilon naught. It's e square by a is common. We are left with just minus two minus five pi. So, Jovena, can you decide whether the system is bounded or unbounded system? Using this expression of potential energy, can you decide whether the system is bounded or unbounded? Bounded. It's a bounded system. Because potential energy is negative. If potential energy is negative, that means the system is bounded. It's a bounded system. Ah, uh, yes, there one one is left right. This one, huh? Yes. Yes, it's plus two e square by a. Right? So this will cancel this one. So yes, yes, yes. It would be only minus five pi. Please make this correction. I missed this term. Plus two e square by it gets cancelled out. So that's yes, minus five pi. So potential energy is negative. That means the system is bound. Okay, let's erase it. The next topic is. So till now we have done the potential energy of two point charges, potential energy of n point charges. But what if you have field and a point charge? Okay, if you have just a point charge, a charge key. What is potential energy of the system? Just have one single point charge. What is potential energy? Answer is yes. There is no interaction. The cause of potential energy is interaction. For interaction, you need at least two charges or a charge and a field. But if you have just one charge, there is no inter potential energy, no interaction. Potential energy is zero. But if you have point charges in electric field, potential energy. Of a point charge in external field, potential energy of point charge in external field. So, if you have an external electric field, let's say this is the external field. This is the external field. In this external field, we place a point charge Q. So, Jovena, what should be the potential of the energy of this charge? It should be zero or non-zero. The single charge, but in field, potential energy would be zero or non-zero. So non-zero. Non-zero. Why? Because it's an electric field. Yeah, it's an electric field. So this charge will interact with this field, right? So due to that interaction, this charge can have some potential energy. This charge is placed at point A. Over point A, the potential is V1. Due to this charge, this electric field, the potential for this point A is V1. So V one is potential at A. It's potential at A due to electric field. It's potential at A due to electric field. That's V one. So to calculate this potential energy, you can start with the same derivation. First, take this charge Q at infinity, and calculate work done in carrying this charge Q from infinity to point A. But now to carry this Q, you have to do some work against the electric field. So work done. The approach is same. Just calculate work done in carrying your charge from infinity to a point. So work done in carrying charge Q from infinity to a point. So work done in carrying charge Q from infinity to a is its charge Q potential at a minus potential at infinity. So potential at infinity is zero. At a, the potential is v one. So this is the work done in carrying this charge q from infinity to this point. That's q v one, and this work done gets stored in the system in the form of potential energy. This work done gets stored in the system in form of potential energy. In form of potential energy. 
form of potential energy. So this is potential energy, which is Q V. So this is how we calculate potential energy of a single point charge in electric field. So if you have a point charge in electric field, then potential energy is Q V. Okay. After one point charge, then you have potential energy of two point charges. Two point charges. So instead of a single point charge, if you have two charges, like a charge Q1 and a charge Q, charge Q1 is placed at point A, charge Q2 is at point B, potential at A is V1, potential at B is V2, and the separation between Q1 and Q2 are R1. So Duba, can you guess the number of interactions here? In this Four. Four. The correct answer is three. Total, you have three interactions. See, this Q1 will interact with the field first interaction. Q2 will interact with the field, that's second interaction. Q1 will interact with Q2, that's third interaction. This one is fourth. We have two charges in field. So Q1 will interact with field, that's first interaction. Q2 can interact with field, that's second interaction. Q1 and Q2 can interact with each other, that will be the third interaction. So the total number of interactions are three. So total, you have three interactions. So the potential energy is, potential energy of the system is, it's U is, it's Q1, potential is V1. Interaction of charge with field. When charge interact with field, then the potential energy is charge multiplied by potential over that. Next, Q2 will interact with field and the potential energy is simply Q2 V2. Third, Q1 and Q2 will interact with each other. Charge Q1 and Q2 will interact with each other. And the potential energy is simply one over four pi epsilon naught. It's Q1, it's Q2 over R1. So you have three interactions and three terms in potential energy. Q1 will interact with field first interaction. Q2 will interact with field second interaction. Q1 and Q2 will interact with each other. That's third interaction. So a total three terms. Okay, so you have some electric field. In this electric field, this is some electric field. In this electric field, let's substitute some charges. Like here, let's put a charge Q, one. And here, let's put another charge Q. So this is electric field. In this electric field, let's substitute two charges. Say the value of Q1 is minus two millicoulomb. Here Q2 is minus three millicoulomb. The potential over this point is two volt. Potential over this point is 5 volt. The separation between the charges is 5 meter, 5 m. Or rather take it as 9 m. Calculate potential energy of the system. Calculate potential energy of the system. Calculate potential energy of the system of charges. The straight formula based numerical, you have charges, you have potentials. This is the formula, no? it's charge Q1 potential at that point plus charge Q2 potential at that point. Then you have one over four pi epsilon naught. It's Q1, Q2 by R12. So everything is given. Calculate the total potential energy. So the potential energy is Q1. Q1 is minus two millicoulomb. So it's minus two into 10 raised to the power minus three multiplied by two plus Q2, it's minus three into 10 raised to the power minus three into V2, which is five, plus nine into 10 raised to the power nine. Q1 is minus two into 10 raised to the power minus three. Q2 is minus three into 10 raised to the power minus three over R12, R12 is nine mm. It's nine into 10 raised to the power minus three. So this nine will cancel this nine. So potential energy is minus four into 10 raised to the power minus three, minus 15 into 10 raised to the power minus three. This 10 raised to the power minus three will cancel this 10 raised to the power minus three. So that is six raised to the power six. Six into 10 raised to the power six. Right, so this is, uh, minus 0 
minus 0.015 and this is 6, 3, 6. So the potential energy is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 minus 0 0.9, 0.9. So it's almost 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 minutes. Almost. 